Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 4 december 2016. Ik had hier nog een radio aan staan, maar ik denk dat die niet hoorbaar was. Nu is hij uit. <laughs> Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Today's bulletin is from the Rain Report and is all about rechargeable batteries. It's an interview with Russ Craig of Batteries America, one of the major players in this field. After that we have some Morse code and an SSTV image in PD90 which shows three rather defective rechargeable batteries. Do you use rechargeable batteries? You'd be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't. Hams and scanner enthusiasts make use of rechargeable technology every time they turn on a handheld handy talkie or a scanner. A major player in the sale of such batteries and development of chargers for said batteries is Batteries America. Its marketing director is Russ Craig. The company was started Around 1977, the Everett Yost, KB9XI, founder of the company, still works for us. He's an electrical engineer. He worked for Wisconsin Power and Light for most of his career. And on the side, he was an electrical whiz kid, always making things, designing things. One day, around 76, 77, he was contacted by a friend who had some surplus batteries he thought Everett might be interested in. Everett looked at these surplus batteries and found out that they were actually batteries that were inside battery packs, things like iCom and Motorola walkie-talkies. He recognized them because he had tinkered with and taken those types of battery packs apart. This was a quite a big load of surplus batteries, so he bought them, assembled them, put them together. He managed to acquire some spot welders. He had learned and, and thought that there might be an opportunity to sell these things for people who wanted to rebuild battery packs without having to pay full price for brand new ones because even though this was the 70s, these were very expensive products back then. That's how it started with one or two designs for things like ICOM BP2s or ICOM BP3s, Motorola P50 batteries. These were you know, fairly large handhelds, but it wasn't that quite a variety of them back then, and he was able to make these inserts. These were nickel-cadmium batteries. They were rechargeable. They're not the kind of batteries you could ever buy in a store. Everett would take them to hand fests. Somebody offhandedly said, hey, it's Mr. Nykad. He don't know where it came from. He doesn't remember who said it, but somehow that name got around via ham radio communication, and everybody started calling him Mr. Nykad after that. This was a name that was thrust upon him, which he gladly accepted. That started his ham radio business. So it was actually a name for him, but he never had a business called Mr. Nykad. Correct. His business was E.H. Yost and Company. He bought and sold whatever he could get his hands on. He did it as a side business when he wasn't working uh, his 9 to 5 uh, on the job during the week. You know, on his weekends, he would tirelessly go to trade shows here and there throughout the Midwest and sell whatever he could. Gradually, the rechargeable batteries became the, the highest percentage volume of, of that uh, business. How did Everett decide then... And how do you, as the marketing director, decide now what batteries you're going to carry? It's uh, based on things such as sales volume, popularity, customer feedback. We also learned the radio control hobby, RC hobby market, another market that utilized rechargeable batteries, small ones, oddball size batteries, things you didn't typically find in stores. And we discovered that there was a market for this too, is especially if we could manufacture battery packs that go inside flying you know, airplane models. These were very difficult things to acquire back, say, in the early 80s or even the mid 80s. Knowing that there was a source here in the United States that could actually make these battery packs created demand and it created word of mouth. The sales just slowly, steadily grew. What is the rarest battery that you carry? And conversely, what is the most popular battery? Right now, the most popular battery would be in what's called an Eneloop Nickel Hydride. These are rechargeable batteries. Eneloop is a trade name. They are available primarily in what they call consumer sizes, double A's and triple A's. They go inside remotes. They go inside handheld controllers, inside little walkie-talkies. They're the most popular because when they're just sitting around, they hold their charge. This is a new application of the technology. Yesteryear's batteries, rechargeable ones particularly, when they sat around for a month, they would go flat, so to speak. They would lose their charge. You couldn't use them until you charged them up again. Nickel metal hydride is the chemistry of the battery, but they're formulated a little differently 
so that they stay charged when they're not being used. When you pull them off the shelf, they're actually going to work. This is what customers actually want. That's what's making them the most popular thing right now. We utilize these batteries to make walkie-talkie batteries. We use them to make batteries for radio control, a hobby, various different purposes. Nickel metal hydride has been around a while. How does the ion battery shelf life stack up against nickel metal hydride? Lithium ion started really coming into being in the aughts, in the early 2000s. They're not really made with rare earth materials. That's why they're in everything. Every cell phone has a lithium ion battery. So there's billions and billions of lithium ion batteries out in the world right now. So they have what's called low self discharge. That's what consumers want. These are batteries, they don't just go down by themselves like the old mic heads or the old metal hydrides. They hold their charge until you're ready to use them. They're very efficient for their mass. They have good capacity and low mass relatively speaking. They're relatively inexpensive to produce. That's why there's so many billions and billions of them out there. They do need to be recycled. They should never be thrown out in the trash. There are little or no heavy metals present in the cells, and they're very small, so they can be put into very small things. The smallest cell phones, uh, the little Bluetooth devices that clip over your ear, I think they're powered by tiny little lithium-ion polymer batteries. Are lithium-ion batteries being utilized in HTs now more than nickel metal hydride? Yes, they are being utilized now more increasingly and predominantly. ICOM, which is famous and deservedly so in the communications industry, they started out making NICAD batteries. We, we built NICAD inserts to rebuild their batteries. In the late 90s, they started making battery packs with nickel metal hydride batteries. One of the first ones that ever existed was for the ICOM ICA23, which was an aircraft radio. That radio featured, I believe it featured the first battery ICOM ever made, which was nickel metal hydride. Metal hydride took over from NICAD, and now new radios that come out. It's one of the most popular radios on the market now is the ICOM ID51 and the ID31. These are fantastic uh, D-Star radios, and they come with lithium-ion batteries. So the factory original products are now lithium-ion. Uh, the ICT90 features lithium-ion. The Yaesu, the VX5, the VX6, and the VX7 are some of the most biggest-selling radios in the world. They run on lithium-ion batteries. The new radios that come out now, they just about all are supplied with lithium-ion batteries. The low-cost radios, scanners, family radios, you still see those with metal hydride batteries because they're relatively cheap. The lithium-ion batteries, they're kind of expensive to buy the finished products, but they last two, three, four years. It's a good value. I would imagine that your radios that come out of China these days, especially the real small ones, they're using lithium-ion batteries as well? Yes. The lithium-ion product are primarily made in Asia. ICOM batteries are made over there. Kenwood's uh, for the THD-72, their newer radios, they're made over there. Uh, Yesu's batteries, they're all made over there. Now you see an influx of low-priced transceivers on the market. Now, some of the biggest selling volume-wise, in terms of quantity, the biggest selling radios are these brands like uh, Bofeng and TYT, and they are supplied with lithium-ion batteries as well. How much does heat play into the care and feeding of our modern rechargeable batteries? Heat is the enemy of a lithium-ion battery. Moisture is the enemy of all batteries. The NICAD and metal hydride batteries still exist, and they're still popular because they have a greater resistance to temperature. In other words, in the real world, if something is left on the dashboard of a car, if you leave your cell phone on the dash of your car inside, and, it, and that can be up to 120, 130 degrees, that'll disable your phone. If you had a NICAD or a metal hydride battery, it would not. It would not disable the radio. Those batteries are designed to function up to 140, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So they're a little more temperature resistant than lithium ions. 
That's why they usually, in the instruction manual, never leave in direct sunlight. The lithium product is susceptible to being disabled temporarily because of thermal protectors built inside the batteries to prevent what's called runaway. So they'll disable the batteries, and you cannot use them until they physically cool down. Are there any American battery manufacturers around anymore? Very few. Very, very, very few. Rechargeable batteries, the highest quality ones were Sanyo. They were manufactured in Japan. Saft made very high quality batteries. Those were made in Europe. Rayovac made rechargeable batteries in the United States. The only batteries that are generally manufactured in the United States are what are called primary batteries. They're non-rechargeable. There are battery factories that make double A's, double A's and triple A's. They're still scattered sparingly around the United States. Sealed lead, they used to make sealed lead in Erie, Pennsylvania, but they don't make them there anymore. Rechargeable product is predominantly now made overseas. Deze minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2 NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tango Echo. En denk eraan, als je gaat solderen, dat je steeds alleen de kant van de soldeerbout vastpakt waar het draadje uitkomt.